Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman. Of course, I'm really excited because uh, Evan Barnes is on the uh, show and uh, he's an Arkansas boy. I'm an Arkansas boy. Yeah. And uh, so it's always exciting to have someone from your home state uh, be on the show. And you're a big, you're a tournament angler and you, you do some other things. Yeah. So uh, first start with where you started fishing. Like uh, you started and you're fishing around like Lake Darnell area, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. I, that uh, that's where I cut my teeth, so to speak. If right. if, uh, if you want to say that, uh, say that I uh, actually was very fortunate to get uh, kind of paired up with one of the very best fishermen on that lake. You know, kind of an old school guy. His name was Jerry Watson. Anybody who knows oh, no. Darnell fishing yeah. would know Jerry, right? Uh-huh. And uh, when I was 14 years old, uh, we started fishing, you know, those Tuesday night tournaments and stuff together. And, man, you know, we, we, we started winning, and we would win a lot, honestly. And, and you know, as a 14-year-old kid, when you start winning tournaments, it's like your head just starts to, you know, just explode with, with confidence, you know. And I thought I was going to be the best the best bass fisherman in the whole world, you know, pretty pretty early on. And, you know, got definitely got humbled after that, I guess you right. could say for sure but i'm super thankful for that start because that's what really got me going and that success kind of fueled everything into the future for sure and then you went from uh, the 14 year old kid yeah did you fish uh, high school fishing tournaments, or were those not around when you were? They, I don't want to age you, right? But yeah. uh, no, um, honestly, I'm pretty sure high school fishing started probably a couple of years after I graduated, and un- unfortunately, I didn't get to fish in high school. Right. Um, but I did get to fish in college, so um, I just kind of started the um, you know there at Arkansas Tech there in okay. Russellville um, as on the fishing team, and you know, I didn't really know what that looked like, but I knew that uh, that they had a fishing team, and I knew I wanted to be involved in it, you know. Right. And um, you know. I'll never forget really the you know those first few tournaments kind of awkward getting getting started but I think I got second or third in our very first tournament uh there on uh, I think it was on Little Lake Atkins there, wow. there in Atkins and so uh-huh. um you know kind of started off there and you know I had a, a very very blessed college career you know I guess you would say I fished for Arkansas Tech for five years and um you know I got to uh, you know I paired up with um my partner my team partner there for the most part was uh dustin huggins and uh aaron sarner along the way but those guys you know we we meshed really well had a really good team and and mine and dustin's claim to fame is we won our first tournament ever together uh we won a lot in between and we won our very last one as well so it was pretty cool cool kind of going out he was a little ahead of me uh, but kind of a sending away party for him uh, and for our you know our team that we had we won won our last one as well and so I'll say one more thing about, you know, about the college fishing thing. You know, one of our best claim to fame is, um, you know, they had this ACA School of the Year um, in college fishing, and we actually yes. won the very first one. We were the number oh. one team in the nation. Seriously. Uh, and yeah, and so that was who did, pretty Who cool. did you have on your team? Give them a shout out. Oh, you yeah. can make we, sure we, they – We had guys, uh, Roy Roberts, Dustin Huggins, Aaron Sarna, um, you know, Evan Smith, another Evan, uh, you know, uh-huh. guys, Cody Kelly at that point. Um, and, and a lot of us, Britt, what's pretty cool, a lot of us either went to, went on to fish either like semi-professionally or, at, you know, as a very successful co-angler too. So we had a right. really – stacked team um, and then you know we got to fish we, we were actually the team that was fishing against guys like the Jordan Lee and the Dustin Connell wow. and, and guys like that Matt of Matt Lee of course and so to come out on top against that group man you got to know that we were pretty stacked we had right. a good team for sure so and so now awesome. you've you've gone from there went from the college and now you've you've uh, decided to take it to the next level <laughs> yeah you know that was uh that was definitely a dream of mine you know like i said from a from a young kid once you start having a little bit of success you know you want to you want to do you know be as good as you can you know and i definitely did i had that dream to be a professional fisherman you know for from from young age didn't know what that was going to look like of course after college you know because you had those shots and you know you there's the national championships and stuff and right. you know we, we we had several top tens and got really close a couple of times to winning should have won a couple of them um, that would have advanced that much quicker than what it actually ended up being. But anyways, long story short, you know, I, I, uh, I started fishing some BFLs and some TBF tournaments and had some really good runs in the TBF tournaments, uh, won several of those at a state level and then uh, jumped forward a little bit to kind of like the regional level and ended up finishing like third on Lake Truman and stuff like that. So just right. kind of gradually, you know, getting your name out there and getting started. And then um, in 2016, I really started fishing – 
um, you know, semi-professionally, I guess you would say, as far as a level goes in what was then uh, the, the the Costa Series, right. uh, which is now the Toyota Series, right? Uh-huh. Um, and so I had a, had a great year in 2016, uh, you know, best year I ever had, made the championship, had a good championship, and, uh, you know, that kind of fast-tracked me and, and actually qualified me as I think I finished maybe seventh in the points that year in that division um, to fish the what was then the FLW Tour. Right. Um, you know, so that was technically on a, you know, you put the air quotes on there, a professional nice. fisherman, you know, at that point, you know. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, I honestly, I went into that year, that first year as being a tour pro. Um, gosh, it was, a, it was a rude awakening, so to speak, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I went in with high hopes and thinking, man, I'm going to win Rookie of the Year and I'll I'll, I'll do really well, and man, I, I I pretty much fell on my face. It was really tough, um, really really tough for actually a few years, three years really in a row. Um, I really really struggled, and I'm so I'm just thankful for the last two years that that's turned around big time for right. sure. And and so now you're fishing. Tell them uh, what two levels. Yeah, so we we I fish now uh, the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Uh, uh-huh. You know that's uh, that's like I said, formerly what was the FLW Tour is now called the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Right. Um, so I get to fish against guys that I've looked up to my whole life. You know, right. and I'm looking across the, you know, I'm looking across the uh, the water there, and there's a you know a Mark Rose and sometimes Andy Morgan or a Michael Neal. You know those type right. of guys, and you know it's it's people that you've looked up to. Your your entire life and now you're fishing against them and here I am five or actually six years into it now um you know it's it, there's not as much of that all factor you know or right. that that shell shock of oh my gosh I got to beat these di- these guys and uh, you know with a little bit of momentum um you know I have been able to be pretty successful against them so it's pretty right. cool to you know see your name a lot of times grouped with those guys um it's, it's really cool actually <laughs> and uh I think maybe the uh, fact that the money coming out of your pocket, uh, yeah. you forget about uh, who you're fishing against. <laughs> really fishing against the fish, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent right. You know, especially now the format's changed just a little bit. You know, so we actually zero on the last days now, and, and right. so um, you know, kind of I would typically have been that guy. You know, I'm, other than the you know the one time that I the the one win that I got on Texoma last year, uh, I did lead it wire to wire. But um, you know, typically I might be that top ten guy but not necessarily leading the tournament and so for them to zero on that last day you know I think it gives a guy like me a chance to say hey I'm here I, you know I can't go anywhere else but now we're back on an even keel so I can swing for the fence um, you know I know that's cliche to say but that's right. you know that's kind of a good mentality to have on that last day and that's what I did you know I finished fifth there at Rayburn in our very first tournament this year and I was against a guy like a, you know, like a Michael Neal of course he ended up winning the tournament but right. you know you're you're at an even playing field and you've just got to beat him him one day you don't have to beat him four days in a row so there's a little bit better chance if you can kind of just survive to that last day and I ended up finishing fifth um you know the best start that I've had to to any season so far uh stumbled a little bit there in Florida but I'm still 36th in the points so hopefully uh, you know a lot of those uh you know those points add up over the year and so I think they're they're going to send the top 10 to the Bass Pro Tour so if I can have a couple more good tournaments you know maybe I'll qualify for that and step up next year and be able to fish against these guys you see fishing the Red Crest this week. So you have uh, another job besides just uh, going out there and fishing, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we have a, a, a business in the Hot Springs that I'm kind of partners with called Beast Fishing Innovations down uh-huh. there. And uh, those guys, we actually I, actually we have two locations now. I didn't mention that earlier, but we uh, we have a location in Hot Springs as well as uh, there in Sherwood um, that we've, we've just recently expanded. We have kind of a partnership with Fish and Stuff, which is right. a tackle store there in Sherwood. Um, Jacob and them, and they been uh, really great to, to work with and so um, you kind of have that partnership so we're growing and we're expanding but what we mostly do and what I do um, is we, we sell electronics um, as far as you know power poles and, and live scopes and trolling motors things like that um, right. and I also do installs so I, I do a, I do a little bit of everything as far as working on boats and installs and things like that um, and that's been that's been a big blessing to be able to have something that back home that you can count on to uh, you know to pay the bills when you right. when you when you're back home it's been good for sure so you're doing that uh are you doing a little guiding too yeah yeah i definitely uh i've started guiding and i i, I have a uh you know starting to build that client base you know and to, and to get your 
get your name out there because I haven't been doing that in the past, honestly. And, and, and even though you know you're you're technically a professional fisherman, you know you don't everybody doesn't know you and and you know to get your name out there and to get that client base built up, you know that's kind of where I'm at. It's kind of just building, uh, just building that that guide service. And we do not just guiding, but also electronics training, you know, things like that, and kind of right. educating people how to use their electronics because you know we're doing that every single day. And so you know as well as I do, you know it takes time spent to learn all of those things and I can teach somebody just about everything that I know um, within just a handful of hours you know right. and so that's uh, that's that's a good thing to be able to pass on to somebody and very valuable information for them because honestly we live in a day and age where electronics you I mean there's thousands and thousands of dollars a person can spend uh, on their on their boat and rigging out their boat and then for them not to be happy um, at the point of not being able to use their their equipment to the utmost of its ability it's kind of a shame you know for somebody to make that big of an investment and then right. not have the the capability to use it to the fullness of its of its capabilities you know and so that's what i way i try to help and and uh you know just like i said get guys dialed in and let them know exactly what their units are capable of doing for sure right yeah. so uh if you were to uh give a young angler <laughs> start with the young high school angler what would you tell a young high school angler and right. then what would you tell a college angler and then what would you tell uh, yeah, the the guy who wants to be a, a pro. I got you. So, you know, going back to high school, you know, there's uh there's so many decisions to make, and it's kind of funny that you asked that. You know, actually, I had uh, I had. Um, uh, Greg Vincent's, uh, his, yeah, his son, uh, or no, I'm not, it wasn't, I'm sorry. It wasn't Greg yeah. Vincent. It was, it was, uh, uh, Chapman. His son was, oh, was actually in really? the booth with us earlier and he come up to me and he's, he's about to graduate and he was asking me questions, you know, Hey, do I go to college? Do I not? Um, you know, cause those are some big decisions for a, for a, a right. you know, 18 year old kid. And you know, your, your parents may be swaying you one way and, and someone else might be swaying you another way. And he's like, so man, do I start college or do I just go fishing? You know? And, and so it, it's going to, that answer is going to be different, obviously, for any for any kid. But what I, right. what I what I'm getting at is, you know, I told him, I said, you know, the, the at the end of the day, the best advice that I could possibly give anybody is is do a lot of praying about it. You know, right. that, that is definitely and figure out, you know, what what really the Lord's plan for your life is, um, and go with that, no matter what anybody else says, and go at it with everything you've got, you know, and um, you know, and just really focus on that, and everything else will really take care of itself. But you know, just from a like an advice standpoint, you know, everybody says. Um, the aspect of, um, you know, spending time on the water. It's so important. Right. You know, it's very, very important. The more time that you can spend on the water. And that's what I told him, uh, his, you know, Chatham's son, I told him, like, look, man, you know, I'm not going to be the one that tells you you've got to go to college because, honestly, there's a lot of different ways. And I told him about the guide business and, the right. you know, the installations and things like that that we do. And there's a lot of different things that a person can can make a living back home and that's, that's technically off the water but still on the water, you know, so to right. speak. And so there's a lot more opportunities now that in this industry that a person de definitely does not necessarily have to, you know, pursue college um, as far as, uh, you know, if they, if they want to be a professional bass fisherman, or at least I would say a professional uh, have a professional job in the fishing industry, you know. Right. Um, and so you fast forward into college, of course, um, you know, that's that's kind of where I come from. Um, and, and so I, I met so many of the people that I have contacts with now from, you know, a, right. a partnership or a sponsorship standpoint. Um, and, and I get to carry those relationships into into what I want to do now. And, and so I meet new people. And so, man, that college fishing thing, it's great. It's, it's huge. It's way bigger than it was, you know, when I got started. And so... Right. It's really cool to see that um, and see it grow, and so that's a great avenue as well. And uh, you know, of course, I you know I would suggest you know a business you know business type degree, you know business and marketing. That's the way everything is. Is I got a degree in engineering, and fortunately, with uh, you know doing work on boats and stuff, I still get right. to design mounts and things like that, oh. and design specific things for boats. Um, right. And so I'm still getting to use that degree. But you know, maybe looking back, I probably would have erred to the side of business and just know that side of the of the um, of the industry more than. Than, than say you know what I do now, um, and, and so that that would just help you know obviously in, in uh, you know pursuing this this sport you, you it's kind of it's kind of gotten to the point I don't know if you know some people would say this is unfortunate but it's gotten to the point where a guy that's uh, that that just goes out and catches them like if he's not if he's not doing the social media if he's not really promoting his sponsors right. um, there's very few guys are that are talented enough to fish their way to the top anymore you know you have to be both you have to be 
right. good at fishing and you have to be good at uh, promoting your sponsors and promoting uh, the, the people that, that help you get out there. Um, you know, I know a lot of very, very good fishermen that are not so good on the social media side right. that, that could very easily be a professional fisherman if they would just take the time and, and, and dedicate themselves to, uh, you know, to promoting and to, um, you know, getting their, their people and their sponsors out there, you know. And so right. that's uh, that's what I would say for a, for a college guy, you know, is, is to utilize where you're at, utilize the communi- or the uh, the connections that you're getting right now. And obviously there's, there's stepping stones that you can, you can um, capitalize on while you're in college. But that's a great way to learn um, is, is that college fishing. And then, you know, obviously transition into um, kind of the semi-professional stuff, which is, you know, right. either the Bass Opens or the, you know, the Toyota Series is, is a, is a good right. stepping stone for sure. Yep. So that uh, takes us to uh, Tackle Time. Tackle Time is sponsored by Pico Lures. Pico Lures has a full line of hard baits and soft baits. You can use Pico Lures to catch everything from crappie, walleye, bass, you name it. They got bass, jig heads. They have everything you would need to go out there and go fishing and catch you something from a bass to a crappie that you can eat. So make sure you check their stuff out at picolures.com. And um, that takes us to uh, if they wanted to find out more about uh, your guide service uh, or uh, the the installing yeah. installation, and also if they just want to check out your social media, <laughs> where would they go for all that? Man, so honestly, I have guys reach out to me on a personal level all the time. I'll tell you a real quick story. Um, I got I had a because I got fifth, you know, in the in that tournament there. Marty Marty Stone, you know, being the yes. being the guy that's putting you know putting uh-huh. out the content. He mentioned us, you know, Beast Fishing Innovations a couple of different times on live. And there was a particular guy. I think he's from Indiana. Um, he reached out to me and he said, "Hey, I want to get my boat rigged out. You know, I need all of these electronics." Like, yeah, man, we can do that no problem and hey, we can ship it it'll be there in just a few days no big deal he said no i'm bringing you my boat and so wow. it's like it's pretty incredible to see like you get that type of credibility um and, and your name's already out there and so we're already kind of local semi-locally and regionally known uh-huh. in arkansas and in, in the surrounding states but we're growing even beyond that you know as far as you know obviously like if somebody's going to bring their boat from indiana you know your name has already gotten out there and people know what you do and you know that they and they have confidence you know that you'll that you'll do it right and so i would say that you know if you're wanting to get in touch with us if that's something that you want to do is rig out your boat um we can definitely do that i would just say reach out to me on a personal level that's that's i'm still i'm still that guy right you can call me on my cell phone you can call me you know and text me and all of that but you know i've got the facebook page like everybody it's just evan barnes um is my facebook page instagram is eb fishing inc like evan barnes fishing incorporated uh so check me out on instagram you know posting try to post you know pretty much every day you know stuff and and, and put that content out there um, and and i feel like there's going to be some some stuff uh you, you hopefully you'll be seeing my name a little bit more here pretty soon um lord willing anyways <laughs> there you go there, yeah. there you have it so if you want to find out more uh and you want to visit with uh, evan about maybe installation yeah. or or just going out there and yeah, and we'll learning, fish. yeah, yeah. learning, <laughs> learning more about those electronics because uh, that's that's always a big challenge. Check them out there. Uh, like I always like to end the show, I always tell people to make sure you keep your hooks sharp and your lures in the water. That's right.